There was once a wealthy businessman. The man spent out of his own pocket a million dollars to develop an oil well. He bought the, bought the items to build the well. He went out to the spot. He hired some people to set it all up. They dug and they dug for days. And it turned out to be a dry well. At the end of the day, he, he, he realizes he had lost his money. He shrugs his shoulders, says, well, that's the way life is. And he starts to go home. Driving home, he gets into an automobile accident, runs into another person. They both insist in their own minds. They, they are convinced that they are correct in the way they were driving. The other person's at fault. It goes to court. The judge looks at it and says, okay, the other person was the proper driver, and our businessman is told to pay $1,000 in damages to the vehicle. The businessman walks out of the courtyard, courtroom. He is infuriated that he had to pay that million, they had to pay that $1,000 to the other driver. Later, his friend asks him, why are you so upset? You lost a million dollars earlier on this oil well, and you shrugged it off. And now you're paying $1,000 to another driver, and you're upset. The man replies, yeah, but when I paid a million dollars for the oil well, I knew that it might not work. But this person, why would I pay them $1,000? I know that I was right. Why is it that in the end times, when the Gentiles are given the opportunity to bow to the king in Israel and to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, of Sukkot, will some walk away? You are watching the Haligoy channel of YouTube. I'm a Haligoy. And you could be one too. Why is it that some people will walk away on the Feast of Sukkot? We know that from the prophet Zechariah that when the nations come to fight against Israel, they are defeated. The ones that are left of the nations who came up against Jerusalem will go up from year to year to prostrate himself to the king, the Lord of hosts, and celebrate the festival of tabernacles. That's the festival of Sukkot. And it shall be that whoever of all the families of earth do not go to Jerusalem to prostrate himself to the king, the Lord of hosts, upon them there shall be no rain. So you're, you'll be given a choice. You're either going to go to Israel, bow to the king, and, fall and celebrate the Feast of Sukkot, or you'll go to your own destruction. We find that many people will be take upon himself, this is from Aveda Zara, Will be, take, will be take upon himself to go and make a booth on top of his roof. But the Holy One, blessed be he, shall cause the sun to blaze over them as, in, as at the summer solstice, and every one of them will trample down his booth and go away. As it is said, let us break the bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. If you lose something big and you you don't have any target for your upsetness you're not going to be so upset but if you lose something that you think should be yours and you discover it goes to another person instead and everyone agrees it should go to that other person or you see authorities agree it should go to that other person you're going to be infuriated What's happening in the Feast of Sukkot and what's happening in the High Holidays is a wedding. 
the Bible story, the Bible narrative is primarily speaking of a wedding. The bride, according to according to the scriptures, according to the Bible, the Tanakh, the bride is Israel. The nations of the world have convinced themselves that they hold, a, they, they hold that special place before God. Especially in Christianity you find the concept that they are the bride and Israel is some is not, is, is, is rejected and forgotten about. Now the nations, now the Christian church is, is the bride. When the rubber meets the road, when things fall into place, when Mashiach occurs and there is a king in Jerusalem and the temple is being rebuilt and the bride is being ingathered back to Israel, this is going to upset a lot of people who are not mentally prepared. and They're not prepared in their, heart, in their mind and in their heart for this occurrence. It's going to be very upsetting. Israel is the bride, and the rest of us are not the bride. We are invited to come to Israel, to come to Jerusalem, for the wedding feast. We are invited guests. We are expected to conduct ourselves properly at this wedding feast, and to give honor to the bride and to the groom. And to show proper joy, Simcha, at that time. Unfortunately, many people are going to be in a mood to fight. They feel that they had their special, whatever they thought they were supposed to have, taken away and given to somebody else that in their minds shouldn't deserve it. That will first come as, as a attempt to uh, do battle against Israel, against Jerusalem. When that battle fails, they'll, be get, they'll still be given an opportunity to be guests at the reception. That is, the Feast of Sukkot is a foreshadowing, so to speak, of the wedding reception that is to come. They'll be given an opportunity to partake in this wedding feast to show proper joy, proper reverence, proper respect, and for those people that show in a proper way, they will receive subsidence in the world to come. They'll receive rain, and those who do not, will not receive rain, they're not going to receive subsidence. It is very important at this time, in this time and age, that we prepare ourselves with the understanding that Israel is the bride. And we are not. We are guests at a wedding reception. So take the time, consider it, understand it. Understand that it's a good thing to be a guest at a wedding reception. It's a good thing to be a friend and rejoice with the bride. Thank you very much.